So I'm waiting for my taxi. It's coming in less than one minute. Actually, it's here. Let's go. I cannot believe how quiet it is now. Not even a single soul outside the street, which is very weird for Madrid. We always say hi to the bakers, so I stop for a moment to capture my colleague in the baking. So me too, rushing to change and start my shift. My colleague on pastry is on fire baking already too. My morning shift begins like usual. I quickly complete the delivery sheet, arrange pastries for different locations, give final touches and once it's done, we do a quality control. Following job, lamination. We normally start with babka or croissant dough, but today let's see how Queen Aman is done. We divide the dough sheet in half and put a double layer of butter. I try to kind of glue all these parts as when we pass the whole thing through the lamination machine, it might not stay intact as it's huge. Once the dough is flattened, we check the ends if we see clear layers of dough and butter. If not, we trim it and save scraps for further use. Then fold the dough in three even parts. Turn and let's pass it through the pastry breaks again. Repeating the same exercise and folding into thirds again. After this fold, we leave the dough to rest in the fridge and this time we will use sugar instead of flour. We flatten the dough and do the last fold. Exactly the same method as earlier, just putting a lot of sugar. We basically need to use all this bowl of sugar while rolling the dough. And a little bit more. And more. While rolling the dough, we keep adding sugar till we have just a bit, which will be used to sprinkle on the working table for cutting. Finally, we cut the dough in quadrants, press the corners to the center, and put in buttered molds. We bake them in the morning, and they look like this. Every day at the same time, one of the pastry chefs runs upstairs on the bread side to help with the baguettes, since they do hundreds of them. My colleague has done thousands and thousands of these. Let's have a look one more time. One by one, having six hands, job gets done really fast. And look at it, we are done. After proving, they get scored and finally baked. First we begin by rolling the quiche dough, which was mixed yesterday, so it's properly relaxed. Passing slowly through the breaks, and once we reach the thickness we want, we stretch them a bit. Instead of oil spray, we use butter for our molds, arranging on the tray and lining the number we need today. Then blind baking and filling with roasted vegetables and quiche mix. simply giving a final touch for this bun. 
slicing the bun almost in half, whipping some cream and filling generously. Lastly, sifting some icing sugar on top and they are ready for the counter. Here we do flour or baskets like danishes, where the squares get folded inside. Proofed, filled with creme patisserie, baked and after that topped with fresh berries. Here, not like in other places before, we mix financiers by hand. After we make brunoset and leaving to cool a bit, we butter the molds, leave aside and continue with the mix. We sift dry ingredients, then follows burn butter and egg whites, but in stages. Immediately pouring it in a pastry bag and piping in prepared molds. Depending on the day, sometimes we do raspberries or other type of berry inside or simply honey financier with flaked almonds on top. When we make things on large scale, we need to make sure the production is not behind the request. So when we make, for example, sablé biscuits, we make quite a lot in one go. We roll the dough between silicone and paper sheets, as it gives stability and the dough doesn't slide. After that, those sheets will be cut evenly into small pieces and left to cool down. The day when we bake them, we dip corners in the sugar and sprinkle a tiny bit of sea salt. Just have a look at this army of cookies. Once the croissant dough is mixed, we leave it outside to relax. Then we flatten the dough and trying to get more or less the tray size. Covering with the cling film. We're really trying to cover every inch so it doesn't get in a contact with the air. Then leaving in the freezer and later transferring to the fridge to rest. Towards the end of the shift, we always prepare butter for tomorrow's lamination. Butter amount formula is simple, we use one third of the weight of the dough. Once we build up all we need, we continue on the pastry breaks. Sprinkle some flour first and start flattening very slowly. That is a very simple but effective way to do your butters. At the same time, we do butters for babka, quinamang, croissants, and whenever we need for puff pastry. For those imperfect butter plugs, I'll give a little help. I'll flatten the butter and only then pass it through the brakes. Or even easier way is to flatten the butter block very thinly and then add on top of the plug you are going to use for croissants. No more jobs left to do on the pastry brakes, plus the mise en place list is also done. So we had to search for more cleaning cloth and start cleaning down. Sweeping the floor and leaving other two pastry chefs who started a bit later to finish their mise en place. As of now, I had home and probably with the loaf in my hands. When I got home, I always look forward to having Marty. It became like a ritual to me. Alejandro came up with the idea to go and see another market in Madrid as they're about to pack everything down for the next year. So after a little rest, we are heading to the city. Since we found nothing to eat there, we walked to Mercado San Miguel and had our classic Pimientos del Patron and slice of Tortilla. Dinner sorted. Thank you. 
My day is not over yet. I feel I can still get some work done. But first, I like to create a relaxed environment at home by lighting some candles, putting my diffuser on, so it enhances my workflow. I quickly catch up with my Spanish homeworks as every week I go to Spanish school while trying to improve my integration into Spanish culture. But the problem is that I get sleepy very quickly after work, so I have to take a quick dance break as it helps me to energize my body and mind. It often gets out of control, but that's the most innocent way to stay awake. Finally, some holy time for video editing. And since it's getting late, I run to take my shower. Maya and Alejandro's sleeping hours are quite different, so when I work, I always hit the bed first and wake up first. I'm preparing my clothes as well for tomorrow. We all get used to the things in life. Thank you for watching. And see you next week.